Hi, I'm Lynette Greenville and I am your Mission Builder Coach. And I am so glad that you joined me in today's workshop. I'm so excited about it because you will leave with a simple roadmap to become a champion that God intended you to be. I'll be sharing some top leadership tips and some memorable steps for action takers. So what is leadership? Well, we know leadership is influence, right? You have a circle that you get to influence in your leadership realm. Leadership, <coughs> excuse me, is also problem solving. People are looking to us to solve a problem and help them uh, move forward, right? And that leads me to three, leadership is helping others succeed. And lastly, leadership, oh my goodness, will require a champion mindset. Yes. Today, I am going to give you my champion roadmap that will help you lead other champions who will join you in your mission and not just have those fans who are watching from the sidelines. So let's delve into the word champion a little bit. The word champion means a man between two camps, an arbiter, one who takes a position, one who does not fight in the ranks like an ordinary soldier, but comes forth and stands in the forefront and stands in between the hostile camps. Wow, there's a mouthful right there. So there in that space, a challenge goes out to come, to stand, to fight, and to defend. And boy, oh boy, isn't there ever a need today for champions in our world? So the definition of champion is an upholder. Okay, an advocate who will speak on behalf of others, a defender, a supporter. Yes, and again, one who speaks up for a cause. And I love this uh, verse, the scripture in Psalm 89, verses 19 and 20. Hope had diminished, but God gives a promise. The raising up of a champion. I have found David from among the people, and I have anointed him um, and his enemies, I love this, will not triumph over him. And you know, this is our namesake for Esther Calling, our mentorship group, but I love the story of Queen Esther, and her story is similar. God chose a common orphan girl to become a champion who would stand up for her people and save her nation. And many of us know that a uh, verse in from Esther 414, when her uh, Mordecai, her uncle said to her, um, and who knows Esther, but you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. And my friends, I just wanna just lean in here for a minute. Everywhere you've been in your life, everywhere you've journeyed, Everything you've learned, even the mistakes you've made has brought you to this point in time. And just perhaps, just perhaps you have brought, been brought to this position for such a time as this. So what I teach all the time in Mission Builders is that everything in our life um, that God uses, can use for good, the good, bad, and the ugly, yes, my friend, all of it to prepare you for what he has for you and for that calling that he has for you. So I want to encourage you today, sister, you too have been called to champion a cause. And um, just as God prepared David and just as he prepared Esther, he is preparing you and me, um, each with our own unique strength and style so that we can become equipped to bravely champion the cause. And I like to say it's that holy ache that God has divinely put in each and every one of our hearts. So if brother, you're listening, you are a David. Sister, you are an Esther among your people. God has appointed you. So say this with me, the enemy will not triumph 
over me. So let me, let's say it together. The enemy will not triumph over me and say this, I have been called to champion my cause. Again, I have been called to champion my cause. Amen. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee or tea with me. I really want this to be relational. And I hope that that portrays through the screen um, as we're reaching now around the world, we could reach with our coffee cups in hand and just share and encourage one another. So I love, love, love this. So, <clears throat> all right, let's dive in. Who is ready to become a champion? Type me in the chat if you are ready. Okay. I see it, I see it, I see it. I see the me's coming out. Uh, me, 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 I'm ready to become a champion. So true to form, I'll be teaching acronym style today, breaking down the word, you guessed it, champion. So let me give you the preview and then I will break down each letter separately. Okay, so C, called to a cause. H a heart that is brave. A, advance the mission. Four, M, makes sacrifices. Mm. P, prepares oneself. I, influences others. O, overcomes those obstacles. N, never gives up, which leads us to S, plural, champions, sees the victory. My friends, we are reminded that we will reap a harvest if we do not become weary and give up. Amen? So let's dive right into C. So C is the first letter and is called to a cause. When God thought of you before you were even born, he instilled that cause, that purpose on the inside of you. Your purpose, my friend, is formed by your history. And your history is now writing your destiny. I want to repeat that because that was good when I got that from the throne room. I'm like, oh, that's good, Lord. My purpose is formed by my history, and my history is writing my destiny. Amen. Amen. So that is that holy ache that's inside of us, right? Well, actually, I'm getting to there. Um, H is a heart that is brave, and um, a heart that has that holy ache within it. And what, what is that holy ache, right? Um, it's that thing that you dream about at night, that thing that wakes you up in the morning and that you're thinking about it, the thing that you're pondering all day, the thing that you reminds you of this holy ache. If you're watching the news, if you're seeing someone in the grocery store, if you're reading a book, there's things are constantly popping up and it is the heartbeat of a champion. Okay, it is, um, like I said, a heart that is brave. And this holy ache will make you so, so brave. Okay, so let's move on to A, advance. Advance the mission up from wherever that cause is. If it starts here, right, you're going to move it to here. Yes. Um, it, this is your time in place. This is your space in history, right? And whatever it takes, you're going to move that mission forward, that you are called to advance it. Yes, and you have been called to advance. So um, I just want to encourage you that whatever that is, that each of us, if we're called to it, we have an assignment whatever big or small, to move that mission forward and to advance the cause of Christ. Amen? So in order to be that champion, you will also need M. And this is the hard one, 
makes sacrifices. Okay, all right, you know you're called and there are a lot of good things that we could do in the world, okay? There's a lot of good things that we're constantly maybe getting invitations to or we feel pulled that we wanna do this or that. Um, and again, there's many good things, but when you're a champion, you have to pare it down and make room for what is important, okay? And that will take sacrifice and that will take discipline to move and filter through the good things so that you can make time for the God things, okay? Um, when you know that you're called, you will need that time to choose the God things over the good things. And that does mean making sacrifices. Sacrificing some of those earthly things we want, and yes, they can even be good things, but laying those down at the feet of Jesus and saying, okay, Lord, I'm agreeing with your plan for my life. Yes, that I will choose the kingdom things so that I may advance your kingdom. And this was a hard thing. I think of Queen Esther a lot. You know, I think she was, you know, we were told she was a beautiful woman, right? And she probably had some suitors. And now she's called to go into the palace. And maybe her hopes and dreams and her longings and her good things had to be put on that altar of sacrifice so that she could take her royal position, right? For such a time as this. And so that brings me to P. P means you have to prepare. We have to prepare oneself. Esther took over a year to prepare um, for the time she was to meet the king. And we need to also prepare ourselves for the mission um, that's set before us. And I give you kudos because you're preparing because you're here. You're here today. You showed up. And um, we need this. We need to prepare ourselves for our assignments. We need to uh, garner resources. We need to sit at the feet of uh, mentors and coaches and leaders that will speak into us, who will pour into us. And my friend, if you feel like you don't have a coach or a mentor to help you prepare, I just want to say there is a host of them here in the speaker circle. And uh, we have a ton also within our coaches directory and mission builders. So just reach out to me or to Marnie and we will connect you with someone who can help take your mission further down the road because we do need to have that time of preparation. So let us move on to I, that is influence. And I said this before, leadership is influence. You will need influence to get your mission accomplished. Yes, we talk about this a lot. Actually, it's one of our core teachings in Mission Builders. We talk about our COIN, which is an acronym, again, for Circle of Influence. So where is that exactly? Our Circle of Influence can be in our profession. It could be in our home as a mama. It could be on the block that you live on. It could be the apartment complex the building that you're in. It could be your small group at your church. It could be um, the content that you create as an author, as a teacher, right? Or it could be the people group that you are called to. If you're called to youth, if you're called to those who are in prison, if you're called to those have, who are fighting addictions, that is your circle of influence. And um, here, uh, my circle of influence is you. I'm called to reach builders. That is um, Christian women who are on assignment. And that is my heartbeat. That is my calling. I see you. I am you. And I love you. And I feel the same things that you're feeling and that you go through all the time. So let's move on to O. O 
is whoa, <laughs> overcoming those obstacles. Oh, my sister, you will have this. And you know, if you think, oh Lord, I, I'm taking those steps forward that I believe you called me to and all of this opposition is now coming at me. Maybe I was wrong. No, maybe you were right because that's exactly why the opposition is coming because the enemy does not want you to get to the finish line. But my friends, I am here as your mission builder coach to say, do it together. Let's do this thing together and we will get you over the finish line. And if I could say one thing here, if you don't already have a circle of prayer warriors around you, stop everything, stop, drop, and roll right now, okay? You cannot do this without a prayer covering. You need, even if it's one or two other people saying, you know what, I got this event, or I'm writing this book, or I'm preparing this lesson, Sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, will you pray for me? Will you cover me in prayer? We need this, my friend. Even today more than ever, we need that prayer covering. So we will have obstacles and we will need to overcome those obstacles. And that is what a champion does, right? Um, and I love that song, that song's going in my head, we are the champions, my friend. Yes. Um, <laughs> and just like the word or that song says, we'll keep on fighting till the end because we are champions. There's no time for losers, that loser, the enemy. Uh, we are the champions of the world because we have the resurrection power of Jesus on the inside of us. That's what makes us champions and you are well able my sister you are well able to champion your cause amen amen um we are never a loser if we keep going okay and i want to say this even if you're only taking those baby steps forward you are taking ground okay we're gaining ground and that's what matters Okay, let's move to N, round in the corner. N, N, N. I need a sip for this. This is a big one. Mm. You never, a champion will never give up the cause, right? Many times, I just have to tell you a story here. God brings to mind my dear friend, Katie Van Remen. She inspires me to this day. She is now gone to be with the Lord, but she had cerebral palsy and she did not have the use of her arms, her hands or her fingers. Um, she had so much God on the inside of her. She was uh, had so much wealth of wisdom and she figured out a way to become a champion and to use her feet to type her messages. And every month when we had our outreach center, um, we would get donations of support to help us feed and clothe the people we were serving. Um, but every month when she would get her small pittance of her allotment from social security, she would write graciously a 10 or a $20 donation, a support check for the mission work we were doing. And I was the one to open up the PO box and get the letters out of the mailbox. And I would always remember when I would go through the letters and see um, that distinct pen and ink writing on the envelope. I knew that she had painstakingly addressed and had written a check, put the check in the envelope, which is a trick with all fingers, okay? and sealed it with her feet and toes. Okay, my friends, I hope that hit you like it does me and it never loses its impact, right? When I think of Katie's story, I remember the fact that she never gave up on her calling despite her limitations. I wanna encourage you right here, whatever limitation you feel like you have, there is a workaround. God, if God has called you to it, 
He will see you through it. Amen. And this is not just time for survivors. This is time for champions and thrivers. Okay. God has called you, okay, lay down those offenses, lay down those old injuries. The old man is dead. It is time for the warrior and the champion to arise up out of the ashes. Amen. So I want to say, and thinking um, about Katie, um, if you haven't heard it between the lines of my story, I'm going to boldly say it here. What's our problem? What's our excuse? For not doing the do. Okay. That's why I love to encourage people. That's why I love to see those who I coach and mentor to keep going in the midst of amazing obstacles. Champions never give up the cause. So let's move on to S. Champions is plural because we're building an army of champions. Yes, an army of Esters for such a time as this. S is for C. We will see a victory if we do not lose heart and give up, right? So that is my goal as a coach, as a mentor, as a cheerleader, an encourager to help you see your victory wherever that is. Yes, yes. So let me um, recap, okay? So C, champion a cause. H, you have a heart that is brave. A, you will advance the mission, right? Um, you will M, make sacrifice. You will P, become prepared. I, you will influence others. O, you will overcome those obstacles. N, you will never give up. And S, you will See the victory, my friend. Woo! Okay, so we know that our beloved uh, Abraham is regarded as the father of the Christian faith. Um, why? Because he believed. In Hebrews, it says that he believed God's promise. No matter what he saw, no matter he saw his old body, he saw Sarah's old body, but what he believed, right? Joshua. Joshua was the one who was chosen, the champion, who took them to that next level, to that next place um, over the Jordan and into the promised land. Joshua was the one who he saw the promise in the land more than the problems in the land. Yes. And that's also what champions do. They, they don't let the negativity or the, um, the Goliaths or the, the giants in the land scare them. Huh. Much like Gideon, Gideon, Gideon is one of my favorites. Um, he was also, uh, he counted himself as the least in Israel. And what did he do? He uh, rallied 300 handpicked warriors and rooted 22,000 enemy troops with his champion heart and with his little army and his faith and what God could do with his little, right? With the two things, they didn't have swords when they had, they had uh, lights and they had uh, the trumpets, right? And he used what he had. And that's another message for another day. But oh my goodness, that is so near and dear to my heart. My friend, do what you can right where you are with what you have in your hands. And that's what, that's what Gideon did. And look at King David. As a shepherd, he overpowered the lion and the bear. And as a militia man, he conquered Goliath and the Philistines and led many armies of Israel. And where did it start? You know, it didn't start with the whole armor and the big sword and the big shield. It started with what? His slingshot and his five smooth stones, right? Let's look at Elijah. He withstood 450 false prophets and called fire down from heaven. And let's remember Esther again. She became brave and stood for her people, even though 
right? This obstacle of, wow, I'm putting my life on the line here. And she decided, if I perish, I perish, but I need to do this, right? Oh, the same with all oh, the disciples and the apostles and the martyrs of the New Testament, right? Let's look at Peter. His first message brought 3,000 conversions. He didn't let the mistakes that he made of denying Jesus three times to get in his way. And I love that scene after Jesus was uh, resurrected and he had a little walk and talk with Peter. And he said, Gee, he said, Peter, I want you to feed my sheep. Will you do that for me? Yes, Lord, yes. And then second time, Peter, will you, will you feed my lambs? Yes, yes, Lord, I will. And then again, Peter, will you feed my sheep? And by this point, he's like, Lord, you know I will. And then it dawned on him. This was the, the restoration of Peter from him denying him three times, right? How beautiful that is, yes. So, yeah, so much, so much good. So let's look at Paul. Paul, who wrote so much of the New Testament, who was a former Christian oppress oppressor, right? He became God's chosen instrument to grow the church and the faith of the emerging believers in over 50 cities throughout the Roman Empire. Some more current champions. Let's, let's go there. Let's go there for a minute. And that, this is one of my favorite women in history, Harriet Tubman. She was a little woman, okay, much like myself. She was a trailblazer, breaking the ranks of slavery and poverty. And she became a great leader despite her disability, her singleness, her womanhood, and her status as a small frame Black woman. And did you know that she even served as a guide in the U.S. Army during the Civil War? Wow. She is a champion for sure. And I love this other one, Mother Teresa. She broke ranks. She championed the cause of the hungry, the outcasts, and cared for them last hours, days, and weeks, no matter what religious affiliation they were. Um, and how do champions emerge? They surrender. They surrender. We see this as a common theme that has been echoing in recent days of church revival, right? Surrender of worship, the surrender of Lord, let it be thy will and not my will, right? This is a key component, my friends, to becoming a champion, surrendering to God's will for our lives. You dear one, have caught the eye of God. Do you know that he's looking to and fro across the earth to find those that are willing to champion his cause? He has given you a passion and a holy ache to champion on this earth and to enlarge the kingdom. He is looking to show favor on those who are totally surrendered and committed to his plans and purposes. Yeah. You have, my dear, your own unique sound, your own unique identity, calling, program, assignments that you're going to offer to the world. But as champions, we need to learn how to be effective vessels, yes, so that we can emerge victorious. So as I close, let me just pray for you. Father, I thank you for my sisters. Thank you that they have found this teaching, this, this workshop, Lord God. And I pray, Lord, an anointing on each and one of them for more boldness, more courage, more bravery, more confidence to walk out in the callings, the missions, and the assignments that you have for her. And I just pray this in the precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, sealed by the seal of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
Thank you, sister, for joining me. Much love. Mwah.